Today's video is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles for some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. Curiosity Stream is available on many platforms: web app, Roku, Android, Xbox One, Smart TVs, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Amazon Kindle, Apple TV, and is available worldwide. Take a deep breath. If you're interested in true crime content, then why not head over to Curiosity Stream and check out their popular docu-series, Murder Maps. There's also an eight-part series, The Bone Detectives, that delves into some historical forensic anthropology. Very cool. Go to curiositystream.com forward slash brain food for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And right now, you guys can use the promo code BRAINFOOD to save 25% off the cost of an annual subscription, which makes it only $14.99 a year. Not a month, $14.99 for the whole year. It's a great deal. Click the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash brain food to save 25% off right now, $14.99 for the whole year. And now today's video. As will come as a surprise to very few, many natural alternatives to medicine often spread about and not backed up by any scientific research or even sometimes any real evidence whatsoever. It's a shocker, we know. The claims often attributed to them are, in most cases, primarily based on anecdotal evidence, which can be extremely misleading. So it will come as no surprise if many of you watching this are starting this video extremely skeptical about the supposed many medicinal benefits attributed to honey. In fact, we here at today found out including the medical professional author of this very script, were extremely skeptical as well. However, it turns out there are very clear and scientifically proven reasons behind why honey works so well as a treatment for a variety of maladies, and there have been numerous studies showing just how effective it is compared to certain synthetic pharmaceuticals, in certain cases even seemingly better than the alternatives prescribed by your friendly neighborhood doctor. So, let's dive into it, shall we? From ancient Greece to current underdeveloped countries in Africa, honey has been a sought-after healing agent to treat a wide variety of afflictions. Aristotle, in 350 BC, recommended the use of several different types of honey to treat different ailments. Despite being used throughout recorded history only recently, have honey's medicinal effects been studied in a scientific manner to verify or not its effectiveness in various scenarios. One of the most important attributes of raw honey in this context is that it possesses inherent antibacterial properties. This makes it particularly useful in treating burns, peptic ulcers, gastroenteritis, and infections. The latter usefulness in treating infections is even more important given the growing resistance to current antibiotics many microbes are developing. The properties that make honey such a potent antibacterial agent are high viscosity, low pH, high osmolarity, and low availability of free water, and its natural ability to produce hydrogen peroxide. It should be noted that certain types of honey have been shown to work better than others, and we'll have much more on that later in the video and the importance of using the correct honey and how some types can actually be harmful. But for now, for instance, manuka honey, honey made from bees pollinating the manuka tree, has been shown to inhibit the growth of more types of bacteria than many other types of honey. On this note, because different types of honey have different antibacterial capabilities, honey is now being classified with what's known as its inhibine factor, rating its antimicrobial efficacy. As to how it works, to begin with, honey inhibits bacterial growth by stopping it at the cellular level. Staphylococcal forms of bacteria are some of the most common present in wounds. They also proving to be some of the hardest to kill. Many types of this bacteria have grown resistant to methicillin, one of the most common classes of antibiotics. When these bacteria clump together, they form a barrier known as a biofilm. Current antibiotics have a very difficult time penetrating these biofilms. Honey, on the other hand, seems to prevent these biofilms from forming. In addition, when already present, it has been shown to still be able to kill up to 85% of the microbes despite the biofilm. The reason for this seems to be that it prevents the bacteria from clinging to human fibronectin. Fibronectin is a protein on the surface of any damaged cell, such as a burned or ulcerated cell. Honey also generally has a pH value between 3.2 and 4.5, making it a very acidic agent. Most bacteria need a less acidic environment in order to propagate and thrive. For example, E. coli, Salmonella, and Streptococci all need a pH environment of 4 to 4.5 to flourish. Thus, most types of honey will inhibit growth of these common pathogens. In addition to that, honey has a low availability of water for bacteria to use, being about 84% fructose and glucose. The 15-21% of water by weight in honey strongly interacts 
reacts with the sugar molecules, and thus there is very little left available for anything else like bacteria. This free water, known as the water activity or AW, is measured between a 5.6 and a 6.2 for most types of honey. For reference, bacteria can have their growth completely inhibited by an AW of 9.4 to 9.9. Honey also has an enzyme glucose oxidase that produces hydrogen peroxide, particularly during its ripening stages, with the production stopping once the pH drops low enough. That being said, fully ripened honey is a pretty low level of hydrogen peroxide. However, should you dilute the honey in water, this enzyme activity increases by a factor of up to 50,000, making it very effective as a slow-release antiseptic. This slow-release effect is particularly helpful as it does not damage healthy tissue, which a high dose of hydrogen peroxide will do. It's even able to destroy newly formed skin cells, which is the opposite of helpful. Rather, these slow-release low doses kill only the germs while leaving the healthy tissue unharmed. Properly prepared, stay tuned for bonus facts in a bit, this makes a honey water solution particularly ideal for treating eye infections. In the general case, however, diluting honey and taking advantage of its hydrogen peroxide production in a more significant way will get rid of many of the other antibacterial properties, so it's usually best to just use pure honey rather than dilute it. Specifically, diluting honey will change its pH and its AW values. If you choose to dilute the honey with, say, water, then its pH and free water levels will rise to the point that they won't inhibit microbial growth, and you'll have to rely more on the increased hydrogen peroxide production to prevent infection. Finally, honey also generally has the effect of reducing pain on burns and open wounds because it prevents air from reaching the wounded area. Further, it has been shown to reduce scarring due to stimulating skin regrowth. Another great side benefit to using honey to treat burns and cuts is that a bandage used after honey is fully applied to a wounded area won't stick to the wound when removed. Honey works so well as an antimicrobial agent that it has been beating its synthetic counterparts quite handily in many recent scientific studies. For instance, one study comparing the application of honey over common burn treatment agent silver sulfadiazine showed the following. Of the burn patients treated with topical honey, 90% of them were microbe-free on the burn after seven days. Of the patients treated with silver sulfadiazine, 84% of them not only had positive signs of bacteria, but they also all showed persistent signs of infection. The study showed that honey made wounds sterile in less time, reduced the chances of scars and post-burn contractures, and drastically enhanced healing overall compared to the silver sulfur. Honey's main healing properties haven't been lost on one Dr. Peter Molin, who has created a synthetic rubber-like material that supposedly mimics all of the benefits of Manuka honey, but without the main drawback of the initial stickiness, and no doubt without the secondary drawback of honey not being patentable. The $6 billion global market on wound care treatment combined with the ever-increasing resistance various microbe strains are developing against common methicillin-based drugs no doubt has been a powerful motivator in the development of a synthetic alternative to honey for pharmaceutical companies to patent and sell. Time and further studies will show whether Dr. Molin's material will be just as effective and as cheap. One place honey is beginning to be used in the professional medical field is in the cancer ward of Bonn University Children's Clinic in Germany. What they use there is something called meta honey, which is basically just raw honey that is subjected to regular quality control tests. Cancer patients are particularly vulnerable to infection and other complications due to many of the treatments for cancer inhibiting the body's natural wound healing ability. As Dr. Simon, who works there, stated, normally a skin injury heals in a week. With our children, it often takes a month or more. What they found is that the use of honey causes dead tissue to be rejected faster and the wounds heal more rapidly. What is more, changing dressings is less painful since the poultices are easier to remove without damaging the newly formed layer of skin. Even wounds which consistently refuse to heal for years can, in our experience, be brought under control with medi honey, and this frequently happens within a few weeks. Honey also reduces the foul odor that some wounds can produce. One thing to note on all of this is that store-bought honey is typically highly processed and as a result loses much of its effectiveness for medical purposes. As such, when using honey as a medicinal agent, you should always use raw, unprocessed honey, which can usually be found at farmer's markets, fruit stands, and the like. However, even there, one has to be somewhat cautious. As mentioned, honey's antibiotic capabilities are based partially on which type of plant the nectar was harvested from. On the flip side, there are plants that bees can make honey from that can make you sick, sometimes fatally. For instance, honey made from rhododendrons can cause dizziness, weakness, excessive perspiration, nausea, and vomiting shortly after you ingest it. In rare cases, a person can show symptoms 
symptoms including low blood pressure, low heart rates, and lethal heart rhythms mimicking Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. It can also create first, second, and third degree heart blocks. The cause of the illness is the Griana toxin present in the rhododendron. So another option is just go to your friendly neighborhood Amazon and just get these certified medicinal grade stuff. You'll pay a massive premium, so not exactly the type to put on your toast, but at least you'll know exactly what you're getting when using it for medicinal purposes. Bonus facts. Honey has been shown to work extremely well as a cough suppressant. For example, in one study, children with respiratory tract infections were given two teaspoons of raw honey directly before going to bed. Another group were given recommended doses of dextromethorphan, which is a common cough suppressant. The children who were given honey showed marked signs of decreased coughing in the night, which matched almost perfectly to the decreased coughing in the children who were given dextromethorphan. And now for another bonus fact. In order to make a honey solution suitable for treating eye infections, do the following. Take suitable raw honey and distilled or boiled water and mix them together in equal parts. Use an eyedropper to put two to three drops of this solution in your eye three to four times a day. Obviously, if using boiled water, you should wait for it to cool down a bit before applying it to your eye, unless you're into burned eyeballs. We're not going to judge. And to be fair, pouring boiling water onto your eyeball probably is also highly effective killing bacteria. Just the resultant burns, blindness, and likely serious infection after it is probably a bit counterproductive. But you do you. Don't do you. Such a solution has even been shown to be effective at curing pink eye in cattle. In this particular study, a herd of cattle had pink eye, and one and a half were given the preceding solution regularly, while the other half was given the veterinarian prescribed medication. The result? The group given the honey solution were pink eye free in about half the time the group that used the prescribed medicine were. And now for another bonus fact. Honey has also been used to treat sore throats, even commonly used by opera singers and voice actors, generally mixed with lemon and water to create a tonic. Like so many other traditional honey remedies, this one has only been scientifically researched recently to see if the anecdotal evidence matched with reality. In one study done at the University of Wakato in 2000, they confirmed that honey does indeed make a decent sore throat remedy, even as a treatment for strep throat caused by streptococci bacteria. Indeed, they showed that in the absence of saliva altogether, honey was drastically more effective than dequadin and strepsils at killing the bacteria that cause strep throat. With saliva present, kind of a given when testing in an actual throat, it was just as effective as dequadin and two and a half times more effective than strepsils. Garlic also works well on sore throats, though not necessarily on strep throat. It hasn't been proven yet on strep throat, as far as we can find. But according to a study done by the Palo Alto Medical Foundation, eating garlic while you have a sore throat will significantly shorten the duration of said sore throat. Further, it was found that eating garlic on a daily basis will significantly reduce your likelihood of contracting a cold and will reduce the number of days you're sick if you do get the cold. While we couldn't find a study backing it up, we also assume it will significantly decrease the odds of people kissing you or wanting to stand very close to you when you talk. Depending on your exact situation, this might be a pro or a con. And another bonus fact. Pro tip from our paramedic author, a 3% solution of hydrogen peroxide is effective at removing blood stains. Before washing the clothing that is stained, apply the solution. Next, rinse the clothing with cold water and soap. Repeat as necessary until the blood stain is gone. Do not dry the clothing or apply heat before the stain is completely gone, or it will set in the cloth. You're welcome murderers. So I really hope you found this video interesting. If you did, hit that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.